With trembling lips and voice made shaky by his emotion, looking pale, he asks, Do you really know what I have done? I know everything, Judas. Do you want me to tell you? Or shall I spare you this humiliation? I cannot believe it. Well, let us go over the past few days and tell the incredulous apostle the truth. This morning, you lied several times with regard to the money and to where you spent the night. Last night, you tried to suffocate in lust your feelings, your hatred, your remorse. You, that's enough, that's enough. For pity's sake, say no more or I will run away from your presence. On the contrary, you ought to cling to my knees and ask to be forgiven. Yes, forgive me, master, forgive me, help me. It's stronger than I am. Everything is stronger than I am. I'm going to read from a chapter of the poem of the man God, which is number 339, entitled At Hillel's Sepulchre at Giscala. I'm choosing that one because there we have a dialogue between Judas Iscariot and Jesus, where Jesus is trying to bring about a change in Judas Iscariot's heart because he can see obviously where things are going. And it will be an example of where Judas does have one of his temporary repentances. It doesn't last, but it's real nonetheless. This um, journey to Hillel Sepulchre is a reference to the burial place of the great first century AD Rabbi Hillel, who is revered by Jews of today. And in fact, Jesus, at this point, of course, Jesus, Hillel is dead. But back in the earlier part of Jesus' life, when he goes to Jerusalem with his parents, and as we know from the um, joyful mystery, the fifth joyful mystery, the finding of the child Jesus in the temple, well, what happened there was that Jesus was in the caravan with his family going to um, Jerusalem because he'd reached the age of 12, which was the age of seniority, and he had to be tested. But on the way back, he slipped out from the caravan train, which I think was not just him, but other um, Nazarenes going there as well. And it's only after a while that his parents realise he's missing, but he's gone from there to go to the temple, and he goes to the temple, and there is Rabbi Hillel, elderly, of course, and Rabbi Shammai, who is the other revered rabbi. In fact, both their tombs are not far from each other in um, Israel, in northern Israel. And there there's an amazing dialogue between Jesus and these two rabbis. And one finds that Shammai is much more severe and much less open to the reality that Jesus is bringing forward and which he will explicitly bring forward um, 20 years later. Hillel is much more open to what Jesus has to say. But that's 20 years before. Now we're in the, uh, in the 30s and Jesus is in his public engaging in his public ministry and Hillel has died. So I shall read part of this chapter and just to get a sense of location, it starts off saying, it's, this was a vision given to Maria Valtorta on the 24th of November, 1945. From the village of Myron, Jesus and his apostles take a mountainous road that runs northwest through woods and pastures, rising all the time. They have perhaps already venerated some sepulchres because I can hear them speak about them. So I'll stop there. So they've gone from Myron and they're going... Um, through a mountainous road northwest through the woods and pastures and they're going um, in a going rising all the time and just to help get a sense of perspective of, of where that is in this map which is it's part of the third year of Jesus's public life and it's within the first four months of that third year and as it's chapter 300 
39, we can see that um, we're very much up in the north of Israel. So this is the entire map. And number 339, chapter 339, is, as I said, well, well north of Lake Tiberias. And it's um, at the village of Giscala. And it's, Myron is south of it, and Safed, just to let you know, is um, to the east of it. And I mention that because in doing a little internet search, one can find that um, the name of, of the um, village of Giscala is now Jish. It's a, a population of 3,154 as at 2021, predominantly Maronite Catholic and Melkite Greek, Greek Catholic Christians with a Sunni Muslim Arab minority. And we've got a uh, Jish is, is there. And if we zoom in, so it's very small. There's the Sea of Galilee, Lake Tiberias, and Javed is, oh, Safed, sorry, is up here. So it's as on the map um, that's used to plot the movements of Jesus around Palestine. And um, the places accord with Maria of Altorza's visions because she's just a bedridden woman with uh, a Bible and she doesn't have texts to refer to. She's saying what she sees and sometimes what her inner voice tells her. So they're going from the village of Myron and Myron is on there. Um, in fact, we can say it's called Meron there. And it says, say, north of the Sea of Galilee just as it is on the, uh, on the map that um, is upon which is plotted the journeys of Jesus there, Myron. And Giscala being north of that, just about northwest, nothing, about just directly north of that um, is Giscala, a little bit slightly to the east. <clears throat> So to continue with that, the Iscariot is now ahead with Jesus. At Myron, they must have received and given alms, and Judas is now giving an account of what he received and what he gave. He concludes saying, and here is my offer. I swore last night I would give you it for the poor and as a penance. It's not much. I have not much money with me, but I convinced my mother to send me some frequently through many friends. In the past, when I came away from home, I had a good deal of money, but this time, as I had to travel across mountains by myself or with Thomas only, I took only what was sufficient for our journey. He's referring to the Apostle Thomas there. I prefer to do that. The only thing is, sometimes I will have to ask you for permission to leave you and go and see my friends. I've already arranged everything. Master, shall I continue to keep the money? Do you still trust me? Jesus replies, Judas, you're saying everything by yourself. And I do not know why you do that. You must know that nothing has changed as far as I'm concerned, because I hope that you will change and become once again the disciple you were in the past and that you will become a just man, for whose conversion I pray and suffer. You are right, Master, but with your help, I will certainly become so. In any case, they are minor perfections, things of no importance. Nay, they help us to understand our fellow men and cure them. Your morals, Judas, are strange indeed. And I should say more than that. I've never heard of any doctor falling voluntarily ill in order to be able to say, now I know how to cure people affected by this disease. So am I an incapable man? Who says that, Master? You do, as I do not commit sins. I cannot therefore cure sinners. 
to the surprise. You are you, but we are not you, and we need experience to learn. Jesus responds, that is your old idea, the very same idea of 20 months ago. The only difference is that you then thought that I should commit sin to be able to redeem. I'm really surprised that you've not tried to correct this false of mine, according to your way of judging, and to gift me with this ability to understand sinners. You are joking, Master, and I'm glad. I felt sorry for you. You were so sad, and it is double joy to me that I've made you joke. But I never thought of claiming to be your master. In any case, as you can see yourself, I've corrected my way of thinking, as I now say that this experience is necessary only to us, to us poor men. You are the son of God, are you not? Your wisdom, therefore, needs no experience to be what it is. Jesus replies, Well, you'd better know that innocence is also wisdom, a much greater wisdom than the low dangerous knowledge of sinners. When the holy ignorance of evil should limit our ability to guide ourselves and other people, then the angelical ministry which is always present in pure hearts makes up for that. And you may rest assured that the angels who are most pure can tell good from evil and they can lead the pure souls whom they guard on the just path and to just deeds. Sin does not increase wisdom. It is not light. It is not a guide. Never. It is corruption. It is derangement of mind. It is chaos. Thus, he who commits it tastes its flavour, but at the same time loses the ability to savour many other spiritual things, and no longer has an angel of God, a spirit of order and love to guide him. Instead, he has an angel of Satan to lead him into greater and greater disorder because of the unappeasable hatred that devours those diabolical spirits. Listen, Master, and if one wanted to attain angelical guidance again? Is repentance sufficient? Or does the poison of sin last even after one has repented and has been forgiven? You know. For instance, one who's taken to drinking, even if he swears that he will not get, get drunk again, and is really determined in swearing so, always feels the stimulus to drink, and one suffers Jesus replies, one certainly suffers. That is why one should never become the slave of evil. But to suffer is not to sin, it is expiation. And as a repentant drunkard commits no sin, but gains merits if he resists the stimulus heroically and does not drink any more, so he who has sinned and repents and resists all stimuli, gains merit and will not lack supernatural help to resist. It is not a sin to be tempted. On the contrary, it is a battle that brings victory. And believe me, in God there is only the desire to forgive and help the one who's done wrong but has later repented. Judas is silent for a little while. Then he takes Jesus' hand and kisses it, remaining bent over it. Last night, I exceeded the limit. I insulted you, Master. I told you that I would end up by hating you. How much I blasphemed. Can I ever be forgiven? The greatest sin is to despair of God's mercy, Judas. 
I said, every sin against the Son of Man will be forgiven. The Son of Man has come to forgive, to save, to cure, to lead souls to heaven. Why do you want to lose heaven, Judas? Look at me. Wash your soul in the love emanating from my eyes. Judas responds, do I not disgust you? Yes, you do. But love is stronger than disgust. Judas, poor leper, the greatest leper in Israel. Come and invoke health from him who can give it to you. Give me it, master. No, not that way. There is no true repentance or firm will in you. There's only a faint effort of surviving love for me and for your past vocation. There is a hint of repentance, but it is entirely human. That is not entirely bad. Nay, it is the first step towards good. Cultivate it, increase it, graft it into the supernatural, change it into real love for me. Make it a real return to what you were when you came to me, at least that. Make it not a temporary, emotional, inactive throb of sentimentalism, but a true, active feeling attracting you to good. Judas, I will wait. I can wait. I will pray. I will take the place of your disgusted angel while waiting. My pity, patience and love are perfect and therefore greater than the pity, patience and love of angels. And I can remain beside you in the disgusting stench of what is fermenting in your heart in order to help you. Judas is moved. He is really moved. He's not simulating. With trembling lips and voice made shaky by his emotion, looking pale, he asks, Do you really know what I have done? I know everything, Judas. Do you want me to tell you? Or shall I spare you this humiliation? I cannot believe it. Well, let us go over the past few days and tell the incredulous apostle the truth. This morning, you lied several times with regard to the money and to where you spent the night. Last night, you tried to suffocate in lust your feelings, your hatred, your remorse. You, that's enough, that's enough. For pity's sake, say no more or I will run away from your presence. On the contrary, you ought to cling to my knees and ask to be forgiven. Yes, forgive me, master, forgive me, help me. It's stronger than I am. Everything is stronger than I am. Except the love you ought to have for Jesus. But come here, that I may help you to resist temptation and relieve you of it. And he takes Judas in his arms, shedding silent tears on his dark-haired head. The others, who are a few yards behind, have wisely stopped and comment. See, perhaps Judas is really in trouble. And this morning he's spoken to the master about it. What a fool. I would have done so straight away. It's probably something painful. Oh, it's certainly not bad behaviour of his mother. She's a holy woman. What can be so painful? Perhaps business is not doing well. No, he spends and helps people generously. Well, it's his business. The important thing is that he's in agreement with the master. And that seems to be the case. They've been talking for some time and peacefully. They're now embracing each other. Very well. Yes, because he's very capable and has many acquaintances. It's a good thing that he's of goodwill and in agreement with us and above all with the master. 
Jesus at Hebron said that the tombs of the just are places where miracles are worked or something like that. There are many of them here. Perhaps those of Myron worked a miracle for Judas's perturbation. Oh, if so, he'll become entirely holy now at Hillel's sepulchre. Is it not at Giscala? Yes, Bartholomew. And I'll stop there because then we have the next um, section, which is about Jesus going towards Gis Giscala and the conversation with Judas has ended. But the point of this is, as you can see, that Jesus is making strenuous efforts to bring Judas back. But Judas has his free will and Ju Ju Jesus will not override a person's free will. He won't just wave a wand and make Judas good. Judas has to make an effort and then God will supply support. As Jesus says, boarding it out to everyone. All our sins can be overcome, but we have to make the effort, exercise our willpower. And God's grace will accompany and follow that. And so this is, a, as Maria Valtorta says, G Judas was not simulating. He was really um, distressed and impressed by the way Jesus was talking to him. So there is this temporary um, improvement in Judas. It's not a spoiler alert to say, well, you know, we know what, how it ends. It's just unfortunate, but there we are. So I shall end this video there and see you at the next one.